Hi everyone. So glad we could spend time together around the Word of God. We are coming to you from our home here in San Antonio. This is part of Bev's study. And uh, because of the COVID-19 virus around the world, we are advised to stay in our homes. And I, uh, I'm enjoying being with you in your living room, wherever you may be around the world. Now, please excuse me wearing these dark glasses. I had eye surgery done, so that I don't have to use reading glasses. The surgery was successful, and uh, I can see perfectly now, but everything seems so bright, and these lights I'm here, I'm using to, to uh, record this video, is just too bright for me, so thank you for grace. All right, let's begin. This is a very powerful message you're going to hear now. It's going to fill your heart with faith to deal with this giant that we are facing. All right? Just over 100 years ago, John G. Lake was in Africa as a missionary. And uh, the bubonic plague broke out at the time. 45% of the people were dying from this disease. The disease attacked their lungs. Now, John G. Lake would go into the homes of the people and carry out the dead bodies and bury them. And ships began arriving from around the world filled with doctors coming to Africa to help fight this deadly disease. And they couldn't help noticing that Lake and his assistant were carrying these dead bodies and burying their people without catching the virus. And they asked him, how is that possible? And Lake said, I want you to take your microscope and analyze the foam from the mouth of one of these dead people and you will see the virus germs in the phone and they did so and they confirmed then he said now take some of that phone and place it on my hand and you will see immediately those germs that virus that disease will die they did it and it died just like he said and then they asked him why is this how does that happen and he said the reason is because of the law of the spirit of life. I'll say that again. Lake said it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's the title of my message now. The law of the spirit of life. Lake said, I believe as long as I stay in fellowship with God, then the spirit of God flows into my spirit and into my body. As long as I stay in fellowship, no germ can attach itself to me for the Spirit of God will kill it on contact. The doctors were amazed. Now, Lake explained, as I said, the reason was because of the law of the Spirit of life. He said, those who live in fear and Darkness are under the law of death. I'll say that again. Lake said, those who live in fear and darkness are under the law of death. And he said, if I were in fear, I'd be living under the law of death and not in faith, and the germs would have killed me. Okay, let's examine what Lake said. Let's unwrap this. Where does this life come from? Where does this life that John G. Lake had, where does it come from? And can we have it? And can we operate in this life? Well, certainly we can. The Bible tells us in John 1 verse 3, look at the screens at the bottom as I read, all things were made through Christ, and without Christ, nothing was made that was made. Verse 4 says, in Christ was life. 
in Christ was life. Let's talk about that word life for a moment. Now we know that the New Testament was written in Greek, the Old Testament written in Hebrew, and that word life in the New Testament in Greek is the word zoe, Z-O-E, zoe. According to the W.E. Vines Expository Dictionary, zoe is life as God has it in English. The full explanation for zoe is life as God has it. In other words, the God kind of life. Now, when we repent for our sins and ask Jesus to be our Savior and our Lord, then the Holy Spirit, Zoe life, enters into our spirit and we are born into God's family, or you might say that God's life is born into us. We are born of God with Zoe life, the Holy Spirit entering when we receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. That's why John 3, 36 says, John 3, 36, He who believes in the Son has everlasting Zoe life. Not going to get it, has it. He who believes in Christ has everlasting Zoe life, and he that does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Now let's say that together, because when we say what God says, that goes into our heart, it reprograms our heart and mind, and we start thinking and believing correctly. Now some folks get a little nervous when I ask them to confess these things, and they will sit in church, some folks, and they won't, they won't dare say it. But you know, they'll go out in the streets, or get home, and they'll say anything under the sun. So why won't they say what God's Word says? Why won't they say what the Bible says? It seems strange to me that someone will speak about anything else in the world, but they won't say what the Bible says. Come on, folks. God said in Numbers 14, 28, uh, He said, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I'll do unto you. As you have spoken, God said in my hearing, so I'll do unto you. In other words, God is saying, you'll have what you say. If you say it in my presence, and we need to say what God says, and this is all positive today, so if you'll say it, it'll start working in your life. The John G. Lake life, the vaccination that John G. Lake had, will start working for us. Is that what we want? Sure it is. All right. So let's say this together. I believe in Jesus. Therefore, I have everlasting Zoe life. Praise God. Now, that wasn't too hard, was it? Okay. John 10, verse 10. Jesus said, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now, I wonder who that could be. I wonder who the thief would be. He's talking about the devil and demons, right? He said, Satan's mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. So we can safely assume that the COVID-19 virus fits into that category. The next part of the verse says, I have come, Jesus said, that they might have Zoe life, and that they might have Zoe life more abundantly. So Jesus is saying, I came to the earth to bring you the Zoe life that I have. Jesus is the Zoe life, and he came to bring it to humanity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now then, let's say that together. Say, I have Zoe life abiding in me. Let's try that again. I have Zoe life abiding in me. All right, now go to John 5, 24. Jesus said, I assure you, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have 
eternal Zoe life. How's that? Here's the Creator and the one who died on the cross to redeem us, saying, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me, have Zoe life. They have it. This eternal life. Then then he goes on to say, this is amazing. They will never be condemned for their sins. But they have already passed from death into Zoe life. Amazing. You have already passed from death into Zoe life. You will never be condemned for your sins. Why not? Because, say this, say this with me, I will never be condemned for my sins because if I ask God to forgive me, He does immediately. Praise God. You'll never be condemned because if you mess up, say, Jesus, I'm sorry, immediately you are forgiven. Now, how can you be condemned? Praise God. Say this, I have already passed from death into life. Well done. Say this, I have life as God has it. I have the God kind of life. Say it, family. I know you're sitting at home watching on your iPhone or on your cell phone or on your computer, your laptop or your TV screen. But say it. Even though you're sitting with people, let's all say it. Okay. Now go to Romans 6 verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with Christ through baptism into death. When you get baptized in water, you are being symbolic of, of Jesus dying on the cross and you experiencing what he experienced. You're dying to your old life. You come back out of the water as a new person, a new Christian. All right. So that, here's the reason. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Isn't that amazing? Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. What does that mean? That means, just as Christ is raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit. That's what that means. Now it goes on to say, even so we also should walk in newness of Zoe love. That word life is Zoe. Even so, we, you and I, the body of Christ, should also live in this new Zoe life. Praise God. Say this. The Zoe life that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. Say this. The resurrection life that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. That's so powerful. Now it goes on to say, let's look at the rest of that verse. It says, even so we should also walk in newness of Zoe life. Let's say this together. Even so, I live and do all things by the ability of the resurrection life that lives in me. The resurrection life. Say this, I, say it again. I live and do all things by the ability of the resurrection life that lives in me. Praise God. Then let's say this now. I draw my strength, energy, wisdom, health, provision, protection, like John G. Lake, from this resurrection life continually. I draw my strength, I draw my protection from this resurrection life continually. It is the resurrection life that is flowing through us. We are talking about the John G. Lake vaccination. He was vaccinated, you might say, with the law of the spirit of life and could not get sick. They're searching for a vaccination like crazy at this time for this COVID-19 virus. But John G. Lake had it, and that life was in us. Well, 
Apostle Theo, how come it's not working for me? You know, family, you could have a thousand dollars in your pocket. If you don't take it out and spend it, you can die of starvation. If you don't go spend that money, buy fruit and eat it, you will die from hunger. If we don't spend our faith, this life can't work for us. We have to acknowledge that this life is in us, and then we have to allow this life to work for us. And that's what we are busy with here now in this lesson. All right, Romans 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life, Zoe life, in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. All right, let's think about that. For the law of the spirit of Zoe life. For the law of the spirit of Zoe life. What's this talking about? It's the operation of the Holy Spirit. The law of the spirit of life is the operation of the Holy Spirit. Whom you received when you accepted Jesus as your Savior. We received this life force. We receive the Holy Spirit by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now say this with me, please. The salvation given through Christ has set me free from the death I should have received because I broke the law of God. Let's say it again. All right, ready? This salvation given through Christ has set me free from the death I should have received because I broke the law of God. That the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Now then, go to John, 1 John 5 verse 4. 1 John 5, 4. For whoever is born of God, and that's you and me, overcomes the world. That's a fact. That is a fact. Because God said it. If God said it, it's so. If the creator of all things said light be and it became, <laughs> and he spoke the sea and the, and the stars and everything and made them with the words of his mouth, and he says that you are an overcomer because God lives in you, then you are an overcomer because God lives in you. You are an overcomer of disease, for sure, because God lives in you. He who is born of God overcomes the world. Now then, let's say this together. The presence of the Holy Spirit in me. Go ahead. The presence of the Holy Spirit in me kills all disease, germs, infection, and viruses instantly. Praise God. Now we're going to look at two very, very important scriptures. And I just hope that you took these scriptures down because we need to meditate on these in your private time. You can always listen to this again. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on um, various platforms and will be on our uh, Facebook page as well. Go to Proverbs 4 verse 20. Proverbs 4 verse 20. All right. Now look at this. My son, give attention to my words. God says give attention to his word. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So God is saying we need to meditate on the Word of God regularly. A lot. And he says in verse 22, 4, because my words are Zoe life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. God's Word is life to those who find them 
So how do I find the word of God? By doing what he said, giving it our attention. Give it attention. Listen to it. Say it. Put it in the heart. Once it's in the heart, it becomes life to our whole body. Life. We're talking about the John G. Lake vaccination here. It gives us life to our whole body, family. This is the vaccination right there. It's meditating in the Word of God, feeding on God's Word, because the Word of God is a life force. It's a life force. In the beginning, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then verse 14, verse 12 says, the same chapter, and the Word took on flesh and dwelt among us. We must understand God and His Word are one. One. Right? Christ is the Word. He is the Word. Now, so when I meditate on the Word, I'm fellowshipping with Jesus. I'm fellowshipping with Jesus. And remember what John G. Lake said? He said, I believe as long as I stay in fellowship with God, the Holy Spirit's life flows into my spirit and into my body. If I stay in fellowship with God. That's what we're talking about, family. We're talking about meditating in the Word of God, and as I do, I'm in fellowship with Jesus, and allowing, I'm, I'm drawing on the life in this verse to come into me, whichever verse I'm reading, to flow into me. Like a baby nurses on the breast of a mother, it is its whole life revolves around the nurturing and the nutrition and the food it gets, the nourishment it gets from the mother. So we can do the same with the Word of God. Let this Word be the source of our life. Let it be the source of our life. And it should be, and it is. Now, the last verse we look at is Psalms 107 verse 20. Psalms 107 verse 20. God said, I sent my word to heal them and deliver them from their destructions. I sent my word to heal them and deliver them from their destructions. God sent the word to bring us life, healing, and protection from all problems. Praise his name. I had a dream one time, several years ago. In my dream, I was looking up at, um, I was looking up, and up in front of me, oh, just three, four yards away, was this scripture, Psalm 107 verse 20, being written in fire, like that. One word at a time being written, and there it was in front of me. And I heard a voice read it out as it was being written. And the Spirit of God was in the room. And I was looking at this thinking, wow. And as I kept looking at it for a while, suddenly fire and light came out of that verse and hit me in the chest. And I woke up, the Spirit of God was all over me in that room. And clearly God was saying to me, if you're meditating on my word, life will fill you. This life that John G. Lake had is in all of us. And it's just a simple matter. Like he said, if I'll just spend time, a little time every day with God. And you can't fellowship with God without fellowshipping with the word. It's not possible. I mean, how can we have fellowship with God without letting God speak to us through his word? It's not going to happen. So then, if we maintain this lifestyle, as John G. Lake did, we'd experience the vaccination of John G. Lake in our lives. Let's close by saying this last good confession together. Christ lives in me with his abundant Zoe life, Therefore, disease and sickness cannot live in my body. 
It dies on contact. The life of God is in me. It flows out of me to protect me from all disease. Praise God. And when you put your hands on somebody and say, in the name of Jesus, I release the life of God to flow through you, that life will flow through them and heal them. I've seen that happen thousands of times. It really does work. I'm not only talking about something that John G. Lake experienced, I'm talking about something that I've encountered many times in my life. So take those scriptures, child of God, let them be a comfort to you, feed on them like a nursing baby from the mother's breast, and let that life and confidence and faith fill your heart to know that you can defeat this giant, speak to it and say, COVID-19, you can't hurt me, you can't hurt my family. Praise God, in Jesus' name, He is Lord. And last time I checked, Jesus is still on the throne. God bless you.